My name's Jane Goodall, uh, sometimes known as Dr. Jane. You know, when I was growing up, I was a little girl, I loved animals. When I was 10, I decided I would grow up and go to Africa and live with animals and write books about them. And everybody laughed at me. How will you possibly do that? You don't have money and you're just a girl. Girls don't do that sort of thing. But I had a wonderful mother who said, if you really want something like this, you'll have to work awfully hard, take advantage of every opportunity, but don't give up. In Tanzania, where I spent a lot of my life studying chimpanzees, I'm known as Mama Chimpanzee, <laughs> Mama Sokwe. From a child, I wanted to go to Africa and write books about wild animals. I was lucky enough to be able to do that thanks to meeting Dr. Louis Leakey, a famous paleontologist. I think he was impressed by how much I knew about African animals, even though I was just out from the UK having saved up my fare. And he gave me this amazing opportunity to learn from not just any animal, but the one most like us. I, I began the chimp work in 1960. And then in 1986, by that time, there were seven different field sites where scientists were studying chimps across Africa. When I began, it was just me. So I helped organize a conference in the US to bring these seven scientists from these seven field study sites. And the idea was to discuss how chimp behavior was the same or perhaps different in the different environments. At the same time as these discussions on behavior, there was a session on conservation and a session on conditions in some captive situations. And in both cases, it was utterly shocking. In Africa, chimpanzee habitats were being destroyed, chimpanzee numbers were declining. And so I went to the conference as a scientist and I left as an activist. The biggest difference between us and chimpanzees and other animals is the explosive development of our intellect. And it doesn't make any sense if you think we're the most intellectual creature on the planet that we're destroying our only home. I truly believe that we have a window of time, which is all the time closing. If we get together during that window of time, we can start to heal some of the harm we've inflicted, at least slow down the climate crisis. My greatest hope in this time is the young people. All around the world, young people are rising up as we listen to them and as we empower them. And this is why I began our Roots and Shoots program back in 1991, which began with 12 high school students in Tanzania. It's now in about 60 countries and growing with young people from kindergarten, university and everything in between. And the message is each one of you makes a difference every day. They are making change. Secondly, this thing which makes us different, this intellect, we are beginning to use it to come up with solutions, technological solutions that will enable us to live in greater harmony, electric cars, renewable energy, that sort of thing. And we're beginning to think about our own ecological footprints. And then thirdly, this resilience of nature. I've met so many amazing people who've worked to restore a place that we totally destroyed and give that place sometimes just time and it will recover. Mother Nature will come back and it may not be just as it was before. And animals on the very brink of extinction have been given another chance. So although the tale is doom and gloom, I can't help feeling that with these possibilities, if we really get together, that with our intellect and with our indomitable spirit and with the tools that we have now, that we can't find a way into the future, a better future. But do we have time? I don't know. <laughs>